What I'm going to show you now is how we do a PCNL using the metal dilators. This is part of our PCNL course which we run every year here in Newcastle and this is one of our live cases. We're just taking this opportunity to record it to show you how we use the dilators. So our puncture here is almost certainly going to be above the top of it. We're looking at, we're looking at the CT and these trying to load the control. Yeah, okay. Interesting, I'll do it, don't get any more. So that pacification was there. Didn't look hard to play. Here, it's going to start with a little small nick there, just so enough from the needle. And this is the needle we're using. I don't know if you can zoom in with the system there into this. This is the diamond sort of tip needle, which is a non cutting needle. And I'm going to just pop it through the skin there. I'm going to go for a fairly steep approach. And if you look on the intensifier now, you can see we're going down towards that cave to have the restoration. We're going to watch the tip of the needle and see if it moves in relation to that density. And if anything, it moves slightly in the opposite direction, so I'm probably slightly superficial to it. So I'm probably not quite deep enough, so what I'm going to do is burn my fingers and try there. So this is a hydrophilic wire, and we're just going to probe very gently with this now with the torque device on to see if we can get it to go into the collecting system. So we're just probing and that's actually I think that is within the calyx. So we're just going to come back slightly. See if we can get it to go. Let's have some contrast from below, please. I'm not 100 percent convinced that that's calyx. I could put a bit of contrast in from the needle, but if I'm not in, it's going to completely obscure everything we're looking at. Now, I can feel stone now. It's definitely grating on the end of the needle. So again, you can see the stone moving. I'm pushing the stone. It's pushing the whole kidney across. Store that image, please. Yeah. Just going to try once more. Now, I think we might come here again, please. Might have to uh, just get a wire, a catheter into here, try and get a way out um, and down the system. If we can't, we're just going to dilate up directly into this diagnostic. I don't believe that wire that's going back in itself, John, is actually in the right place. I want to see it going around the stern, a bit like that. Aha, uh -huh. that's gone down the USF fine. Right, so we're down eventually, more by luck than anything else to be fair. Right, what I would have done first is I would have put four French dilators in, it's very small, slips in easily. Um, I would have got it into what, where I think was the space around the stove, put a bit of contrast in to confirm I was in the right place, and also hopefully show the way out through the screen out of the right place. And then I would have got, got a wire down and uh, hopefully then just dilated it up as we're about to now. So we've got a wire that right down into the bladder now. So I'm going to change for a slip working wire. Maybe that slip be something like that. I've got an amplax wire in, which is our working wire. We're going to put the double ender in over, and then we're going to start our dilatation. So I'm just putting this double ender in now, so the inner dilator bit goes in, and the outer sheet goes in over that. We go down through the PUJ, we then take the inner bit out, and we're going to put our second wire down. So that's why I use a Benson wire as a second wire, as I said before, it doesn't really matter what you use, it could equally be a second half plus wire. Now we're going to put the first metal dilator on. This is the one with the ball on the end of it. Alan, Alan, can you move that gauze just mm. out of the way? So, if you can see. That's Alan. So, can you see this dilator now? This is it. The, there's the ball, and the second dilator will go up to that ball. I'll just show you before I put it in. And it stops there. Subsequent dilators stop on the flange at the top end here. So, let's take that back for a moment. I'm going to put the rigid dilator in. You've got to go in at the same angle as your puncture because this is rigid, it's not flexible. 
they can be fairly steep, it's going to be coming from slightly above like that. Now, what the second dilator on there is, we'll take the up to the stone, we have to come put it in the one point. That's why you need your assistant to keep hold of it. Yeah, and you see as I put the dilators in, if I, I rotate them, they go in a lot easier. So we've gone a bit far with that first dilator, so let's pull it back slightly. Better to go too far than come back superficially, because if you come back with the ball and your dilators, you've pretty much got to start again with the smallest dilator. Which is why it's important as they get bigger and the kidney moves away to let your left hand go forward with the dilators. You see how the kidney's being pushed right now? Yeah, so if anything, I'm going to allow it to go forward. Sometimes I might actually let go of the middle dilator altogether, pretty much, and just let it go forward with the kidney. Which is almost what I'm doing now, it's just the dilators are just pushing out. So these dilators get harder as they get bigger to put in. But again, the more you rotate, the easier they go, which is the 32 French outer diameter sheath. And I'm just going to rotate that in. Now, this will not stop, this will keep going if you let it. So you have to. You have to be aware how far you're going and you have to screen it and see the edge. And what I do is once I get the blue amplats into this point, I hold the dilators there. It just gives me a little bit more control. And you can see on the image intensifier, there's a little lip of the dilator as it's going in. You can just get the impression there's a bit more thickness there. So I'm taking that in. And I suspect if anything here, I, can, I will have left this a little bit short. I'm not sure. You can just see the dilator there at the end. What I do now is I get the middle ones and I pull all the dilators out. So if you hold the middle dilator, they will stay together. You have to hold the outer one. And if you have a look at the end of the dilators here, and if you can see that on your camera, you can see how blunt this end is. You get a very flat end rather than a taper, which you get from a balloon. So that's why these are very useful. Okay, here we go. So we're just going to pop this wire out of the way, we're going to move the intensifier out of the way, and Alistair's going to go in with an ethoscope, and hopefully he's going to see some stone. So it's going down the track now, and there's often blood at the bottom, and you have to clear that out. And hopefully you'll see something that's remotely like the collecting system, and hopefully a stone somewhere in there as well. So just sucking out the blood clot. A little flap of something, so I'm just going to pull that sheet back slightly. Let's see what we can see. And that's probably the way, that's the way through. It's that there, so that's it. 